Hey family, welcome back to I Love Me Me. So this is going to be a fun video for me. I'm actually going to turn it into a small series, but I won't do all of them right now. But at, at some point you will see more of the vi these videos pop up. So um, some of you guys know that I'm mar actually married to a Nigerian man and he is from the motherland. He's not like born here. He's born in Nigeria and um I, I've talked to you guys before about sometimes we have cultural differences and so I wanted to go ahead and talk about how this particular video is 14 things that I learned in the dating stages of dating a Nigerian man and I have to say that I ran it by one of my Nigerian sisters just to make sure because <laughs> I feel like, okay, so let me let me complete this sentence. I ran it by one of my Nigerian sisters just to make sure that what I'm saying is actually correct because I feel like sometimes when you're not a part of that person's culture, they try to fake the funk <laughs> or, or um, basically kind of tell you white lies because you really don't know. And so I wanted to make sure that that was not the case in my own relationship. So I did run the list by one of my Nigerian sisters and she basically confirmed like yeah 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 this, this is it honey so <laughs> I'm glad to know that my booty lied to me number one but then also that um, I'm able to come here and share it with you so stay tuned all right so out of 14 I'm just gonna run through them the first one is food is the key to their heart especially the men so what my boo actually show um, what, what my boo actually told me was um, the women do the most of the cooking there and I actually not most of the cooking well, let me back up the women do the cooking actually the women do the domestic duties but that's a different thing specifically getting to his heart is through food and um, some men, not all, but some men have been known to be snatched because maybe the woman or the girlfriend, whomever it is, has not been cooking for the man. But guess what? Somebody else see the potential. They like them. And so they start doing the cooking. And then they they, they kind of get sneaky with it a little bit because they're like, oh, I brought X, Y, and Z to the job. And I just happen to have some. Oh, yeah, you can eat. And then all of a sudden, they, they made a dish specifically for yo boo. Okay, so... <laughs> Um, he actually has confirmed that, you know, as far as my husband, he's actually confirmed that yes, food is the key to the Nigerian man's heart. The second thing that I noticed from dating a Nigerian man was that when they really, really like you, they will pursue the heck out of you when they really, really like you. <laughs> and, uh, he definitely did that. It was pretty much a no brainer. Like he wasn't, he wasn't overly like, um, creepy with it. That's what I'm trying to say because several other African men have actually approached me and I've gone on, on dates with them, obviously before I'm married. And, um, it just, it, it, the connection wasn't there. It was just something about it. And I was like, mm, nah, and he was a, he was a bit smoother with it. He didn't come off super creepy. It wasn't like, um, so one of the guys where we didn't make it because he basically like, he, I think it was the first or second date. And he was just like, basically you're mine. And I'm like, Whoa, what is this all about? <laughs> and recently my husband actually cleared this up. And he didn't even know that he was clearing this up for me. So what he basically said is, so here in America, we know that when you meet somebody, you don't necessarily go up to them and tell them how much you like them and love them and how you want to marry them right on the spot, like as soon as you meet them. Well, in Nigeria, men do that. <laughs> So I had no idea, but you know, when I got approached before and they was like, I, you know, I like you, I love you and all this stuff. They're telling me this and I got creeped out and I was, you know, I'm out the door. That's way too much, bro. That's way too much. We ain't going to make it. <laughs> so obviously we did not make it, but, um, so that's another thing that when they really, really like you, they will pursue the heck out of you. There is pretty much no, um, there's no turning back when they like you, when they want you, when they want you to be a part of their lives and they will pursue the heck out of you, okay? The third thing that I found out about um, Nigerian men is that they can be very, very um, in your face, brash even to the point of being what we call here in america rude and they don't see it as such they just see it as i mean i'm telling you the truth what do you want me to do you want me to lie about it and so to me it's just again it's not what you say it's how you say it they have no tact <laughs> 
<laughs> and I have to say that my, my husband was definitely accused of this from me. And I still even do it now because I'm so used to my American culture. And we we, we will say things that's kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Diplomatic or, you know, whatever. And we don't necessarily want to hurt your feelings. And Nigerian people, what I found, period, Nigerian people. But specifically men, I will say that they are in your face. And it's kind of like, I mean, that is what it is. Or like, if I'm fat. I mean, yeah, you fat. Or if I'm ugly. Yeah, you ugly. So it's just like... They in your face with it, and again here in America, that's just like, oh, you rude. But they not necessarily trying to be. That is a cultural thing. They will tell you what's on their diggity dog on mine. <laughs> Sorry that it hurt your feelings, but guess what? It's the truth. The fourth thing that I learned from dating a Nigerian man is that they do not believe in moving in with the woman at all in their culture. Um, if they do move in with each other before they get married, the woman moves into his place or they get another place together. But there is no way that the man is actually moving in, into the woman's place. I just thought that that was interesting. Uh, I do feel that you two should get a place together. But if it doesn't happen that way, if it can't happen that way for whatever reason, and she happens to have a place and you don't, or her place is more stable, more safe, etc., and yours is not, just move in. But that's their thing. So, yes. Especially when they are in the dating phases, they will not move in with the woman. That is that is a no-no in their culture. No, 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 no. I'm not moving in with you. Now, you can move in with me or we can find another place. But me moving in, your stuff. And actually what, what he said was the reasoning behind that is because they, <laughs> because they don't want to be told what to do or like... Um, don't move that chair or my stuff. Like we, we like to say my stuff as women. So it's, it's, it's my chair. It's my couch. It's, it's my, it's my dishes. It's my, it's my, it's my. So they don't want to be told that they can't do what they want to do in their own place. And I gotta be honest, men love you, but you, you get told what to do, whether you in your place or whether you're in my place. So <laughs> I just felt personally, I felt like that was irrelevant because you still get told what to do. The fifth thing that I want to bring up is that they are all about their money. Yes, they are always trying to figure out a way to gather their money. Um, like always, always, always. Som that sometimes people will actually use um, voodoo uh, to, to like do these rituals so they can become rich like overnight. And um, I just thought that that was like, oh. Like, they will find any means necessary to make that money. Now, here in the States, they pretty much will do anything to make it work for, you know, whether there are actually is multiple multiple people living under the same roof so they can get to that financial goal that they need, saving the money, getting the car, you know, whatever it is. They will do what they got to do in order to get the money. But a lot of it is that they have an entrepreneurial mindset. They really don't like to work for nobody else. They like to work for themselves, which I actually, I actually like that about him. The sixth thing that I found is that most of the time when they move away from the homeland, from their um, city or village or whatever they're coming from, they do it because they want a better lifestyle, but they really do miss their home. And that definitely was true for my boo. As much as he likes America, he loves Nigeria. Like when he went home for those two months last year, uh, we we spoke every day and everything, but he was like, oh, it ain't nothing like home. It's nothing like home. It's nothing like home. And he was just, you could tell that he was homesick, like the build up before he went. He was homesick and he was missing his food all the time. And he was missing being able to go to like the restaurants where they cook his food all the time, not having to hunt for it here in America or make it himself. And um, I'm just now starting to learn how to make his Nigerian dishes. So yeah, he was missing. He was missing home. He was missing home. He was missing friends and family and absolutely speaking his native tongue day in and day out. He was missing that. And so there's a lot of things that he was missing about it, even though he loves America and the lifestyle that it's bringing for him. Number seven, which I thought was really funny. Okay, so y'all listen up. Number seven was that they are told not to marry and even entertain any of us crazy African-American women. And I'm laughing because obviously I'm African-American. <laughs> so um, we have a bad rep. And it's, and it's not like we don't know that we have a bad rep as American as African-American women. We have a bad rep. Every dog on where um, 
blacks in general, but specifically to this video, African American women, we have a bad rep. We are known to be loud, crazy, in your face, will cause a scene. Uh, we got a lot of baby daddies, disrespectful, blah, 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 blah. Like, oh, like, oh, actually, one of the things that he told me specifically that he would hear a lot is that we don't really like to cook and clean for our men and we let the house be dirty. And it's just a whole bunch of stereotypical BS. Now, do we have some nasty people in African African American community? Yes, we do. But they got in the white community, the Hispanic community, the Nigerian community. They got is everywhere around the world. So we just have a bad rep as black women. And it's funny because um, I hear his Nigerian friends when they're talking. Um, <laughs> it's funny to me. So anyway, I hear them sometimes basically saying uh, what took him so long to marry me uh, wh basically where did he find me from where did I come from because I do a lot of these stereotypical things that African-American women don't do and I just I just feel that it's ludicrous again will you find some people African-Americans that are stingy dirty don't clean up won't cook won't do laundry, blah, blah, blah. Yes, but it's not just an African-American women thing. It is a human thing. It is a people thing. It is a man and a woman thing. There are nasty people. They are people that fit the stereotype in every society. So just wanted to throw that out there for all of you out there who have this bad thing or think that we are just, oh my God, in your face and what the F and da da. All of us don't do that. Mm -mm. All of us don't do that. Okay, moving on. The eighth thing is that they find, specifically the men, they find everything, and I say everything, it's a lot of them. It's a lot of things, okay? <laughs> Maybe not everything, but it's a lot of things that they find to be disrespectful when you are just expressing the way that you feel about something. So now, especially you Nigerian women, you can clear this up, but what he has told me is that I'm pretty much when he is expressing something, even if it's something that you do not like as the woman, you pretty much don't talk back. You don't voice your opinion. And that's not something that I'm used to doing. And not that I'm coming back to him doing all of that head rolling and what you going to do about it and all that stuff, because that's just not my personality um, anyway. But if there is something that we are discussing and I feel that I need to give my opinion about, I will not shut up and not give you my opinion about it. You will get my opinion about it. And he knows that this is definitely something I will say that I tell you that we have cultural differences. This is something that he brings up all the time and then we have to talk about it because he'll think that I'm being disrespectful to him about something that I said or how I said it. Maybe sometimes I can get out of pocket because I'm not a, I'm not 100% correct and perfect, right? But for the most part, with me just expressing myself and just getting it off my chest to say, hey, I don't agree with you about this or no, I'm not, you know, whatever it is that we are discussing. Then we have to like sit down and talk about it and I have to let him know this is where I'm coming from. He's letting me know where he's coming from and we can move past it. But here in America, everything that we say that comes out of our mouth, we're not trying to be disrespectful and rude. And that's the same thing that I can say about him and his culture when they're being in your face and brash. It comes off as being rude and disrespectful. The It's the same thing. And so we really have to just find a way him and I specifically to um, get to an understanding where I know you're not being disrespectful to me and he knows I'm not being disrespectful to him. I'm just expressing myself. I am vocalizing my opinion. Number nine, I found that especially in the dating stages, but also he still does it now. He, when we'll never go anywhere, I don't pay for anything. And that's just the way that it is. I don't pay for anything. That is something that is really huge in their culture. Um, the men pays the men pays for everything. Of course, I love that. Now, don't get me wrong. I, it's not that I haven't paid for anything because I don't have a problem paying for stuff. And he knows that I've paid for dates before. But especially in the dating stages, when he would tell me that if the woman pays, it's still like when we when by the time they make it to the restaurant and it's time for the check to be paid, the woman has basically given the cash or whatever it is to the guy. And then, excuse me, he'll still physically pay for the date, whether or not they talked about it outside and she actually is paying for it or not. And that was actually something that we did 
when we were dating because he explained this to me that wasn't something that was a big deal to me if i was taking us out i would just give him the money beforehand and then at the restaurant or wherever it was that we were going he would physically pay for it that wasn't a big deal to me okay fine but overall for the most part anytime we go somewhere he pays for it unless i say babe don't worry about it i'm gonna pay for it but now that we're married i don't think it's a big deal but still for him his whole culture is still inbred he pays for everything. Number 10, I kind of brought this up before, but I want to make sure that you understand that voodoo is really big in the culture. Now, do everybody do it? No, but a high percentage of people do it. Even those who claim to be in the church all the time, they still sneaking around doing some type of voodoo. And it's usually to gain some type of riches. Moolah, money. Nera. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which is their, their currency name. So I just wanted to make sure that I put that out there. They will find a way. Riches is really big. And number 11, they are very traditional in the gender role sense. And I have to say that's even in my household. He will help sometimes, but it's funny because when he, when he, when he helps out now, he wants basically for me to acknowledge every time that he helps around the household. And I get it from his standpoint because the woman, as I said earlier, the woman does all of the domestic duties. So when he does help out, he's like, I washed dishes today. I took out the trash or whatever it is that he did. I just, I just think that it's funny because he, he makes it a point for me to know that he did it that day which is fine i go ahead and give him his props and thanks boo because i'm not gonna lie what that's actually doing he'll actually do it more often because i am saying oh thank you or you know most of the time he doesn't have to point it out but if i'm in my own world and i'm trying to get to the next project and do this and I'm running with the baby i don't see it sometimes and so those are the times that he points it out to me um but still by and large i am the one that's doing the domestic duties and that that is what it is right it's a choice that i decided to sign on for i know that i'm doing most of the domestic duties and that's a part of my relationship and it is what it is right some people are not going to sign on for that and that's fine but for me it's okay it's no big deal whatever the 12th one i think is quite hilarious as well which is they do not usually date or marry anybody that's um older than them specifically the men they usually go for the younger women and um i think that it's funny because specifically in our um relationship i'm actually seven years older than him so i am the older woman per se <laughs> um and it is what it is they usually don't date older women but in our case, I am the old lady. Okay? Okay. Okay. Number 13. They are not usually a lovey-dovey type of people. Yes. Um, most of the time, and now again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from what Boo told me, Nigerian people usually don't um, show like a lot of love and affection towards their children or one another, really. And so, you know, growing up, he didn't really get to see and experience all of the things that we do to our children here in America. Like, come here, give me a hug, give me a kiss, how was your day? Or, you know, even, you know, oh, you got hurt, come here, let mommy help you out or let daddy or whatever it is. They didn't really get all of that. They was all about tough love, like toughen up. No, you okay, get up, dust yourself off, move on. So um, that's something that's definitely different. Number 14, the 14th and final thing that I realized and found out about dating a Nigerian man is that their rent over there is paid yearly versus ours is paid monthly and I thought that that was just very interesting and um, also uh, and also I found out or at least understood that most of the time what we pay here in America for one month of rent is what they pay yearly for um, their rent over there in Nigeria now again that's not every place but that's just some of the places and I just thought that that was very interesting because we pay pretty much everything monthly here in America so to have something paid yearly I don't have to worry about it for a year unless I'm actively you know putting up the money for the entire year myself but usually most people pay things monthly over here so these are the 14 things that I learned about dating a Nigerian man in the near future I'll do what I learned about being engaged to a Nigerian man and in the future future it'll be the what I learned about being married to a Nigerian man and then also I'll say the phrases that I have learned thus 
far. So yes, your girl is submersing herself at least as much as I can into the culture because we are teaching our daughter Yoruba, which is the language. We're teaching, well, when I say we, I really mean him, but the phrases that I do know and understand, I am also saying them to her as well to reinforce them. And I will say it actually seems like she understands Yoruba more than she does English. So we do speak both of the languages here to her. I try to do some of the sign language that I actually understand as well to her. She's, she doesn't seem really interested at this point. And then um, she's also learning a little bit of Spanish. So there's a lot of things going on in this household specifically to our daughter. And we do want to be able to expose her to different things so she can understand the world on a larger scale than even him and I did. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. Of course, Give me thumbs up if you like this video. I will see you again in the next video. Okay? Deuces.